So this is my favorite question, okay, related to trees, not only binary trees, but the DOM trees. So with this question, you will learn how to traverse a HTML DOM tree, okay, and knowing about the DOM APIs is very, very important for companies like Facebook. In our last video, we had seen that how a linked list node is created using the JS object. So that node is nothing but a JavaScript object with properties like value and the next node address. So these are the two keys, but if you can imagine, a DOM tree node will have certain different properties, okay, and that we'll learn in depth, and then go on to solve the related problem. DOM node can actually not only have two children or a single children, it can have an array of children, correct? Because if you can see, a div node in HTML can have a number of children, correct? You can add a paragraph, you can add a, a anything, number of paragraphs, correct? 10 paragraphs inside that. So that would mean that a div node has 10 children, okay? So starting with this, what you need to understand is that the structure of the DOM tree could look like this, correct? It's very, it's not a single chain like linked list, but you understand that when you actually build this data structure, it's not very different from what we studied, uh, the basics that we studied in linked list. DOM tree node will have the pointer called as children, okay? It means that this is the object, okay, for the DOM tree node and inside it, you can imagine it to have a key called as children. And in that children array, you will have the, the memory address of the other DOM nodes, okay? So you can understand that for HTML, it could have the locations of the P children's, like the paragraph children's. So it's nothing but it's, if you compare it to linked list, linked list had the address of the next node, but in this, it will have the address of all, if, all of his children's, correct? So remember that if you do node dot children, it means it is an array, okay, uh, of all the children's of that particular node. Uh, and the most important thing is, which DOM tree has, is that it has the pointer to its parent node as well. So each node has uh, another key called as parent node. Okay, and this points to the parent of that particular node. So you can think of that each of these children elements will have a pointer to its parent node. That is a div tag. Okay, so every p element will have the pointer to its div div node. So let's start with this kind of assumption and let's read about this question. You are told to find the corresponding node in two identical DOM trees. So what does it actually mean? First of all, you need to visualize that there are two DOM trees, okay? And both are like clone of each other. These two trees are given to you, okay? So think like the structure of the two DOM trees are entirely similar, okay? Uh, it's just that they reside in two separate parts of memory. So each node in these two trees have the different addresses, but they are like the clone of each other. The structure is entirely same. So this is a very important info. Now you are given the two roots of the tree as an input, obviously, because the root is the only thing that you need, right, in a tree to traverse it or do anything with it. So you are giving the root A and root B, okay, of these two trees. Now you are also given one target, okay, in the first A tree. What you need to do in uh, the solution the problem is that you need to find the corresponding node, okay, in the B tree, okay. So in the second tree, you need to find the same target node which corresponds, okay, to this B tree. So I hope you understood the problem. So you can see the example that for this target, uh, this will be the node that you need to return from the uh, second tree. Now, what approach we need to follow. So there are multiple ways we can solve this problem, but let's try to think very intuitively, right? So as you see this function over here, we are given root A, root B and the target. Remember the target is a node in the in the tree A, okay? And root A is the root of tree A, root B is the root of tree B. Simple. Now think of an approach where, so you, you know the pointer, right? When you say that you are given these three inputs, you are given the three memory addresses, right? So one of the most intuitive approaches would be to go and traverse the tree B and find that corresponding target node, correct? How to do that? What if we know or we build the path to traverse to that particular target node in tree B, right? So how can we do that? We can only do that when we know what is the corresponding path in the tree A, correct? So what we can do is we can use the information of parent element. Very 
intelligently. So what we will do, we know that here is a target. We know that this dot parent node will give me the parent, correct? Now I go to that parent and I keep going till I reach the root of this A tree. Now in my path, I keep noting each indexes, okay, of the child's, okay. So this way I'll be able to maybe store some, some information that, okay, uh, this particular target node is the fourth child of the parent. So we know the parent, right? We just need to know the value that is it the fourth children or is it, is it the five children? And we will just store that value, okay? The index of this particular node element. I think you need to understand that if you know this particular information, you need to just traverse the same path in this tree. So let's have the current property pointing to the target, okay? Now we know that we need to access the parent element of it via the parent element property, okay? And you will just see what we do, okay? So we go and use the children property of the node, okay? So as I told you, every DOM node has two property called as parent element and the children, correct? So through, through parent element, I reach the parent node and through dot children, I saw all the children of this parent. Now I need to store the value that which child is this, okay? The uh, particular target node, okay? So we need to, so note one thing that whenever you do this, this is not an array. So dot children is an array-like object, but it's not actually an array. So we need to convert it. So the actually return type of this is a HTML collection, okay? So it will lack the APIs of an array. So we want to make it friendly, okay? So we convert this entire HTML collection to an array, okay? And we can use it by using the array.from uh, API. Now we know that we have an array of all the children's and we can go and find the index of, okay, the current. So look carefully what we did. We were pointing at this target, correct? We went to its parent, okay, had all his children, okay, and from the children's array, we found the index that which index this particular target resides on. And this we will do for each node till we reach the root, right? And we'll keep storing this index value. So we go and uh, store this. So let's, and what to use for storing the entire path? We have a path array. So we'll just keep it empty initially and keep on pushing the index. So initially we can keep this path array as empty. Okay, and now we push this index. Once this job is done, okay, for this particular current, now we know that we need to change the current so that we reach the root. So we go and change the current to current.parent. So the same thing that we did for this, now we'll do for the parent node as well, correct? So we go and change the current to current's parent element, okay? So we need to keep doing this as I said, till we reach the root, okay? So you can just use this property uh, or once you reach the root, right? There will be no parent element, correct? So you can even add this uh, condition that till the time the current dot parent element exists, correct? Once it does not exist, we know that we have reached the root. So at end of this entire traversal, we know that path will have of some value, correct? So one, two, three, four. Correct. So now what we need to do is we need to go and pop every element from the path, okay, from the end and apply the same traversal on the tree B. So we go and start doing it. So, so we know that now we need to change the pointer to the tree B. So we go and update our pointer. We use the same variable basically. Now the current is here and now we'll just traverse till we reach the target node in this particular tree and we'll use the path array to traverse. So we go and do current dot children. Okay. How to access the particular, again, we can convert this into the array. Okay. Because it's not an array type. So from here we go and access the index, which index to pick up this particular last one. 
okay because we are at the root and we know that the last entry in the path array would be corresponding to the what we need to apply on the root so think like we have the the pop property okay in the array and we can just remove this four and apply it over here so we have uh the so let's not even do that right so we have got this children child and we'll just apply keep doing it okay till the path array is exhausted correct so we remove this four okay we reached that particular child but we need to do it for three two one so we'll keep doing it and i'll keep updating our current okay from this so till when we will do till we have exhausted all our path array so till the time uh, path length exists or the path array is not empty we'll keep on doing it so at the end of this all operation wherever my current pointer would be correct is the place where i need to like know that that is my solution okay so there is some curly brace missing here and there and we can quickly fix it so this is for this this is for this this is for this bracket ah yeah so here we go let's try to run this yeah so i hope you got the entire uh, gist of the problem and this is a very important problem go and practice it because just by seeing the video you can just understand the concept but you need to write the code to get this well see you on the next video